Hey guys, this is Victor with DIY Time Tech, and in this video I'm going to show you how I was able to fix our Samsung front load washer that stopped working. Specifically, I'm going to show you how to diagnose and replace the main control board. So what happened is our washer just stopped working and wouldn't turn on anymore. The washer was still under extended 5 years warranty and we opened the claim. But when technician came, he just looked at it without even taking it apart and said this is probably fried main control board. So he said he's gonna come back a few days later with a replacement part and swap it. But instead they called us back a few days later saying that they don't have replacement parts in stock and that this washer was also discontinued and they cannot replace it. So they offered us a full refund, which we gladly took. And they also allowed us to keep the old broken washer. So I decided to give it a try and see if I can fix it myself. First, I'm gonna unplug the washer from the power source. Then I needed to close and unplug the water hoses to be able to take out the washer from its bay. Next, we're gonna remove the back plate held in place by two Phillips screws. And there's gonna be two more screws holding the main logic board. And after that, we're gonna be able to slide it to the left and take it out. This particular washer actually has two logic boards. The one on the right is the main logic board and on the left we have the power control board. Each of these boards will cost up to $100 to replace, but I don't think that both of them are bad, so instead I'm gonna test them and try to figure out which one is bad and if the other one still works fine. Also keep in mind that this washer has the third logic board, also known as the user control board, and that's the one at the front that has all of the buttons, display screen and the scroll wheel. So if the main logic board and the power control board seem to be okay, then you may want to check this board as well. So the first thing you want to do is visually inspect the logic board for any signs of physical damage or burn marks. Here's an example of the logic board from the stove that I just recently replaced, where you can clearly see that the board is fried. But in case with our washer, I inspected both of the logic boards and I couldn't find anything obviously wrong with them. I couldn't see any burn marks and all of the capacitors looked fine, the fuse looked okay as well and I couldn't see any other signs of physical damage whatsoever. So let's move on to the next step and plug in the washer to the power outlet and see if the logic boards are getting any power. And before we start, I'd just like to warn you that working on high voltage electric circuits can possibly cause death or injuries if you don't follow all of the safety rules. So if you're not familiar with this type of work, stop immediately and seek help of a professional. Otherwise, do it at your own risk. When I plugged in the power cord, I noticed a red LED light that started blinking on the main logic board, which tells me that this board is definitely getting power. Next, we need to find out if we are getting correct voltage coming into the main logic board. And for that, we're going to use a C power check procedure described in the owner's manual for this washer. We'll need to check the voltage at pin number 1 of CN11 connector and pin number 4 of the power relay 7 connector. The correct measurement should be around 120 volts of alternating current. Here's the relay number 7 on the main logic board. You can see the mark RY7 on the bottom. And here's the pin number 4. I had to remove the connector from the top to be able to see it. Now there's CN11 connector. And the pin number 2 is on the right side. Therefore, pin number 1 should be on the left. I measured voltage between pin number 1 and 4 and I've got 122 volts, which is the correct voltage for this logic board. Now I'm going to try to verify that we are getting correct voltage coming out of the main logic board. I tried to look for the correct voltage on the diagram provided in the owner's manual, but unfortunately it wasn't very helpful and that information wasn't provided there. So instead I looked for a better diagram for my logic board online and it wasn't too difficult to find. Here's a much better diagram that explains every single pin for each connector on the main logic board. I'm going to inspect the connector called CN7 that sends power from the main logic board to the user control board. That's where the power to turn on the washer is. And if the main logic board works properly, we should be measuring 5 volts between pin number 4 and 5, or 12 volts between pin number 5 and 6. I connected my test leads to the pins number 5 and 6, and I'm measuring a little over 12 volts, which is good. 
So this side is working properly. But then I measured the voltage between pins number four and five, and I've got nothing. I should be getting five volts, but all I'm getting is 0.01 instead, which tells me that this board is not good and it needs to be replaced. So I found brand new same exact model of the logic board for $90 online and it came in about a week later and I swapped it with my old one. After I connected everything I turned on the washer and it started working again. So that's how I saved about $500 by fixing a broken $600 washing machine and if you're interested in the tools I used for this repair or where I bought the replacement logic board check out the links in the description area below. I hope this video was helpful and if so please give it thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.